Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a wonderful and crafty weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to create a project for Newton's Nook Designs using a brand new stencil that just arrived over at the shop. And we're also going to use the candy corn stamp and die set that's available. It's been around in the shop for a while, but we're going to put these two together to create um, a fun Halloween project. Now this stencil is super fun and um, it, because it's three piece and it's layerable. So each layer will be a different color, which makes it super easy to create a candy corn field background. I like the stencils. I'm trying to show you the embossed detail on them. It's kind of hard with my lighting, but it's nice because you can line it up anywhere on the page. And the stencils are numbered one through three. So you know which side is right side up too. Sometimes I'll put pixie spray on the wrong side, especially when they're not labeled. So having them labeled makes it really nice. And I like that Newton's Nook Designs goes that extra step. We're going to clear the desk off and bring in a craft mat. And I thought we would do, instead of just basic ink blending, I thought we'd do a little bit of stenciling with some glimmer paste and texture paste and oxide inks. So we're going to start off with stencil number one. I'm going to grab my pixie spray. We're going to go ahead and spray the back side of it. So there's a little bit of tackiness so it helps adhere to the paper. Now speaking of paper, instead of using white background, since our very top layer of candy corn is white, I thought we would bring in a very pale gray. It's kind of, it looks almost white on the camera, but it's, it's, it's a very soft gray. But when you put white on top of it, it's really going to make that can the top of the candy corn um, stand out. This way it doesn't get lost in a white background. I have my acrylic block. I'm going to take some Nouveau Glimmer Paste, this is Moonstone, and we're going to use our Mustard Seed Distress Oxide Ink. If you have red, regular Distress Inks, you could use that too. Um, I just had this easy to grab, so we're going to use this and a little bit of our Moonstone Glimmer Paste. I love this stuff. Super sparkly and shiny. We're going to mix both of these together until we have a nice bright yellow that's sparkly. When it dries, it'll even become more sparkly. I'm gonna go over all of my stencil, filling in my first layer of candy corn. We're gonna use a baby wipe to go ahead and clean off our acrylic block, and then also our spatula, and then we'll do a reveal with our first layer. This, I, I didn't want it to dry. Believe it or not, the glimmer paste dries pretty quickly. So if I don't wipe it off now as I go, um, I'm, I was afraid it was going to dry on my block. But here's the reveal on layer number one. It's so hard to see in the camera, but I love the dimension that this gives, guys. And it also, with the sparkle, just creates a really fun look. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to dry. I'm going to set it aside and then while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of stamping with our candy corn stamp set. Um, we're going to bring in some cardstock that's uh, alcohol marker friendly. I'll zoom in here. And there's two different sizes of candy corn. There's also a little happy face. I forgot about the happy face, but um, it's so cute if you were to stamp the candy corn. The sentiment in here says candy corn counts as a vegetable, right? Question mark. I just think that's so fun. We're going to stamp two sets with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Um, we might not use both of them, but it's good to have an extra set just on hand. Um, I'm going to zoom in, play a little music while I color, and then when I'm done coloring, I will catch you back.
Okay, coloring is all done. Pretty basic coloring, but, um, and I did list the colors for you guys in the, up in the corner. But we are going to go ahead and separate our dies and cut both of our candy cord sets out. And then these are going to be a great little addition to our project today. We'll run these through the, I'm going to tape them down and run these through the die cutting machine. So there's our cute little candy corn. And if you want to stamp the happy face on them right now, that would be a perfect time. Okay, I think our panel is dry enough to work on the second layer. That's how fast, um, although I did speed up the coloring quite a bit. It took me about 10 minutes to color. Well, I was, yeah, about 10 minutes to color, but our panel is dry. So we can go ahead and add our second layer. Second layer is easy to line up. I'm going to spray it with pixie spray, although when you're using texture paste on top of texture uh, paste for layers, you kind of don't need adhesion. You just want to hold it down. Um, that's the only thing I would say that's a little bit difficult about this is since we have the dimension of the first layer, the second one, um, you want to press down pretty good on it just so your texture paste doesn't ooze out. It was, it didn't, it didn't do too bad of a job. I'm going to use ripe persimmon for my orange. We'll put that on the acrylic block. And I want to add a little bit of candied apple because I was afraid this was going to be too light. And then we're going to add some more glimmer paste here. I just about ran out on my first layer. So I'm going to add a little, about half a scoop more and we'll mix the color in here. And again, if you wanted to use your Distress ink cubes, you could do the same thing with this. Um, Distress Oxide does leave a little bit of ch chalkiness normally, but when you add the glimmer paste, I don't think it's that noticeable. But there's our bright and cheery orange. We're going to hold down our stencil, kind of flatten it, and go over it with our second layer. I haven't did this in a while, I forgot how fun this is. But once the entire background's covered, I'm going to go ahead, remove the excess from my palette knife, and again, we'll clean this off so it doesn't, you see how fast it dries. So that's the reason I'm using baby wipes. I don't want to dry on my spatula or my acrylic block. But let's do the reveal on layer number two. And I'm loving the way, the sparkle is amazing, guys. I wish the camera would pick it up. We're kind of overcast today, so the lighting's not the greatest. But we have lots of dimension and lots of shine. I'm actually going to turn my light off. If I turn my light off, actually I'm going to turn my light on and see what this does. Maybe you can see the shine a little bit better. But there we go. But yeah, I just love the, the way this looks out. Okay. We're going to set that aside to dry. My stencil is all washed up and good to go. And we are going to, while that dries, let's do some die cutting. I have some black cardstock and we're going to be using some stars that are in the Sky Scene Builder die set. They're two, two different sizes and we're going to die cut out quite a few, maybe five or six sets. And then I'm taking a couple circles from the circle frame die set. One scalloped, the largest one is scalloped, and then the inside circle is stitched. The scalloped we're going to die cut out with orange cardstock, and then our circle we'll die cut out with white cardstock. That's where we're going to stamp our sentiment. Now next I'm going to bring in some tag. We're going to die cut out a tag. This is the Newton's Nook Designs Fancy Edges Tag die set. Love this die set because you can customize the edges. Um, I'm going to take the zigzag that's in here. It's a stitched, uh, like a pinking sheer kind of a look. I'm going to do one layer with the orange, one layer with the yellow cardstock. Orange is going to be a lot higher than the yellow. And then I have the tag top. I die cut out with orange cardstock. I die cut that out inside the circle scalloped. Um, I'm going to pop it up with foam adhesive so you're not even going to see that hole there. <laughs> I thought we would use save a little cardstock. And then um, I did die cut out the reinforcement with the yellow cardstock. This little uh, tag topper does have a, a score line to where you fold it. You just adhere some tape or glue and attach that to the top. And then I went ahead and add the bottom scallop starting with the orange and then ended it with my yellow scallop. My intention is to offset my circle on my tag 
um, with our sentiment in the middle of the circle here. So let's stamp our sentiment. Again, this one says candy corn counts as a vegetable, right? I just think that's cute. I thought we should add our reinforcement before we do our sentiment. I don't want to lose that. <laughs> Now, we're going to kind of center it in the circle. There's some open area that we're going to fill with some stars. So I know the bottom half fills in. It's, we got that little area on the top. So stars will be a perfect filler for that. I thought we would do a two-tone two sentiment. So we're going to do a little masking. I'm going to take some um, tape and we're going to tape off the bottom part of our sentiment. So we're basically taping off counts as a vegetable, right? And then for the candy corn, we're going to ink up with the same inks that we used for our background. So this is mustard seed. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of bright persimmon on the very top to give it a gradient look. We just remove the tape, stamp this in our little circle, and our top part of our sentiment's good to go. Now what we do is the opposite. We clean off our stamp, tape off our candy corn, and then we'll ink up the second half of our sentiment with Versifying Onyx Black Ink. And then we have a two-tone sentiment that I think is perfect for our candy corn. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and um, take this and put this on our circle background. We just gotta let it dry a little bit. Um, Sometimes Versafine takes a little bit of time to dry and I've often smeared it if I don't wait a bit. Um, so in the meantime, let's take some black and white baker's twine and thread that through our tag. I like to, to tie a bow to our tag once it's secured to an area. Since our the hole in our background scallop circle is pretty large, I'm bringing in a piece of fun foam I use adhesive back fun foam, so one side have it has adhesive, the other doesn't. I'm going to take the backing and replace it. This way it doesn't stick down to my work surface. <laughs> okay, layer number two is all good to go. Didn't take too long at all. Now we are going to go ahead and fill in layer number three. So I'm lining up our third layer, which is our white layer. Now you could use just plain moonstone glimmer paste but it is a little bit transparent and I didn't want the gray coming through so I, I wasn't sure how this was going to work but we're going to mix two different brands together. I have some Ranger texture paste um, that I'm about out of and it's pretty thick. It's it's um I don't think it would last another month. I think it's pretty dry. So we're going to add a little bit of sparkle with our glimmer paste. We're going to mix both of these together and see if it will soften up my texture paste and add a little shine at the same time. And it worked out beautifully. Um, I don't know if it's had as a hazardous or not, <laughs> but it sure looks pretty with my candy corn. So we're gonna go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna mix these together. And once it's nice and blended, I was checking to see the sparkle and it's there, which is nice. I'm gonna go ahead and go over all of the top layer of my stencil just filling in all of the whites of the candy corn. Now we are one level higher, still remember that, but um, so you want to hold this down. And then once you have the entire stencil covered, we're going to do a little reveal. And I love the way this turns out. You can see how bright white that is. Um, and it did turn opaque, which is really nice. And um, against that gray, it just makes those candy corn stand. In fact, I love this. It looks like can't like you could just pick it up and eat it. I love the way this turned out. Um, I'm not sure if I want to cover this with a tag or not. We'll see. But I'm just using my fingers and wiping off the excess. Now I took a little lunch break and came back because believe it or not, the texture paste with the glimmer paste um, took a little bit longer to dry. So um, in fact, it's still a little bit wet, but I think it's workable. I'm going to go ahead and trim down this panel. This is a card front panel. I'm going to basically trim a quarter inch off, but I do want to trim off a little bit, about an eighth of an inch off the left. We'll flip it around, trim off at about an eighth of an inch off the right. And then we have that open area on the bottom. We're going to take off a quarter. The top filled in really nicely, but the bottom we need to take about a quarter inch off. So then our panel is good to go.
since my texture paste is still a little bit wet I'm going to go ahead and add tape if I can grab it <laughs> directly to my A2 size card base and then we can add our panel right on top you can see it leaves me a little bit of a border and I'm pressing down in between the white of my candy corn that way I don't smush it <laughs> Okay, I went ahead and decided to not use my tag on my card today. So I did want to embellish my card. So I used one of the puppies from this stamp set. This is the Puppy Plate, um, Playtime. It is uh, Puppy Playtime. And I thought the little guy in here was cute with the um, we, the um, banda, uh, bandana with polka dots. I colored it in with orange and yellows. Next, I went ahead and adhered my sentiment, and then we're going to go ahead and add a couple candy corns. The tag would have just covered up all that work that we did with the stencil, and I, I love the stencil so much I didn't want to cover it. <laughs> so we're going to make two projects today. Um, I am going to fill in some open area above my sentiment with some stars. Um, I put three above and then two below, and then I didn't like my doggy wonky, so we put him straight up and down. And so I think he looks fabulous. So that's project number one. Now we're gonna finish off our tag. I went ahead and stamped another sentiment the exact same way. Um, so the candy corn's colored and then the rest of it's black. I'm gonna use my circle, uh, stitch circle here. And I did die cut out a yellow scallop circle. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and die cut that out. Now I decided not to use my yellow circle I just put that back in the packaging and I adhered my sentiment to my tag I wanted a little bit of those zigzags to show put the candy corn on the bottom and I forgot about my happy face this would have been a perfect one for happy face um, but I just added five stars two on the bottom of the sentiment and then three on the top I'm gonna go ahead and use um, tie the black and white Baker's twine on the top of the tag here and then all you really need is a, a little bag of candy, um, a little goodie bag, or actually somebody mentioned before that you, a little a toy would be cute for people who are allergic or have candy allergies. I thought that would be really nice. But I am gonna use my white gel pen and dot my little puppy's eyes to make them a little brighter. And then on my tag, I actually have a little smudge. I went over the tag of the sentiment trying to brighten up that white area. But that's my project today. I thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a fabulous day, and I hope you get a chance to check out the brand new release over at Newton Slick Designs. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.